Hello friends, welcome to communication skills for everyone. Today, let's see how to teach vocabulary. So it's like teaching vocabulary. So first of all, vocabulary is very very important aspect in teaching language. So what does knowing a word mean? So when we answer this question, so it be like uh, knowing how a word is spelled, that is spelling and knowing how it is pronounced that is like pronunciation knowing the grammatical category or categories of the word it's like parts of speech knowing the grammatical associations of the words what are the possible associations and knowing the lexical associations of the word knowing which language register or domain the word is generally used in so is it technical or general word and next one knowing the meanings meanings of the words so how many meanings are there is it positive or negative or neutral meaning formal meaning or informal meaning and in the last one use of the word and which context it is used if what are the uses of that particular word knowing it also is an important aspect this is once we know all this then only we can say that yes we know the particular word Next, what needs to be taught? So when, whenever we are, whenever you, someone is teaching vocabulary to students, so there are things, right? What are the things need to be taught? The first one is uh, form. So form is like uh, pronunciation and spelling. The learner, so yeah, the learner has to know what a word uh, sounds like and how it looks like. So your spelling as well as pronunciation is important aspect in teaching. So we need to make sure that both these aspects are accurately presented and learned. So form is an important aspect. The second one, grammar. The grammatical category of new vocabulary item, right? This is also information. Any other relevant information also needs attention. So whenever teaching a new word, for example, we might also teach its uh, first form. And uh, if this is irregular, like uh, think, talk, see, so, throw, through, we, wet, we might also draw a little bit of attention to whether the verb is intransitive or intransitive. Similarly, when teaching a noun, so we wish to present its plural forms like the bird, birds, chair, chair, stable, tables, mouse, mice. Uh, so we will want to uh, draw the learner's attention to the fact that it has to be plural at all times like uh, whenever you are talking about information, advice, police, sir, scissors. So, so it's also uh, show learners that grammatical collocations like uh, for example uh, which a word normally keeps for example want to enjoy like your workplace ing form responsible for like uh, this so second one is the uh, grammar and the next third aspect like uh, your lexical collocation so in any language particular word combines or sound right or wrong in a given context so this is another detail about new word which may be worth teaching for example, acceptable collocations, take a decision, draw a conclusion, uh, come to a conclusion, toss a coin, then tire. Wrong collocations, extremely welcome, a sharp word, a dangerous color, a tiresome book. These are wrong collocations. So, uh, as a teacher, you have to teach collocations to the students so that they avoid using wrong collocations. Next the aspect, aspects of meaning. It's uh, like uh, the meaning of a word is uh, primarily what it refers to in the real world. So it's a major real world. Like uh, it's denotation, denotation. For example, dog denotes a kind of animal. More specifically, a common domestic carnivorous animal. So that is denotation. A less obvious component of the meaning of a word is its connotation. 
when we are talking about the connotation of a word, we are talking about the associations or positive or negative feelings evoked by the word. For instance, the same word dog as understood by most British people has positive connotations of loyalty and friendship. So your dog denote, dog doesn't denote as an animal but it denotes it connotes like uh, positive adjectives like loyalty and friendship. But the Arabic equivalent when we say that the Arabic equivalent of dog it is understood by most Arabs as negative associations of dirt and reality. So you see that positive as well as negative connotations in two different uh, uh, cultures. Similarly, uh, the next one, appropriateness. A more subtle aspect of meaning that we often need to teach is whether the use of a particular word is appropriate in a certain context or not. The learner needs to know whether a certain word is very common or relatively rare or taboo in political conversation or tends to be used in writing but not in speech or is more suitable for a formal than informal discourse or belongs to a certain dialect. Appropriateness and next more to aspects of meaning. Otherwise you say meaning relationships. How the meaning of one item relates to the meaning of others can also be a very useful in teaching vocabulary. So there are various uh, such relationships, for example, like uh, synonyms. These items uh, mean the same or nearly the same. For example, bright, clear, smart can be the synonyms of intelligent. Intelligent synonyms bright, clever, smart. Second one, antonyms. These uh, words mean the opposite, like uh, rich, poor, slow, fast, impressive, unimpressive. See, high points. These words are specific examples uh, of a general concept like uh, bicycle, car, crack, bus are all iconics of vehicle. So whenever we are talking about vehicle, so all comes into mind. Similarly, next one, coordinates. This is also called as co names like red, orange, green, purple or so called superordinates superordinates also called hypernames these are general concepts that cover specific items like animal is the superordinate of uh, dog lion elephant mouse so on and so forth the next one translation translation these are word or words or expressions in the learning of mother tongue that are more or less equal in the meaning to the word is being taught so you have what are the possible you know, variations which are similar to or native language the next uh, one more uh, part old relationships like relationship between forehead eyes nose mouth and face whenever we are talking about uh, head this comes into picture like uh, mentioned more likewise the items that are part of the same context of the mind, for example, the farm, farmer, cattle, poultry, crabs, all these words are associated with farming or cultivation. These are the things in the next, when we move to the next uh, one, sixth one, word formation. Word formation, like uh, in word formation, we are, so we are concerned with the prefix and suffix. These are attached to word roots to form new words it's like etymology, study of etymology is like. For instance, uh, unsatisfactory. So here, un plus satisfactory. Un is a prefix and satisfactory is the root word. Similarly, solvable. Sol is root word and able is uh, suffix. So we have like uh, two prefix and suffix in word formation. And the next one, compound words. Uh, a compound word is a word, right? Generally, it's made up of two words. Uh, there are also compound adjectives, right? Compound adjectives like uh, 
uh, well dressed so when we say well dressed left handed self centered easy going a run down house no hard shoes a burnt out truck built up area what is the compound adjectives next one compound nouns this compound nouns generally is written as uh, two words like a uh, bank account youth hostel letter box blood pressure so we really have uh, one word compound noun written with the uh, icon between this like uh, pen name we use the hyphen between these two babysitter eight traffic control eight traffic between that hyphen and safety belt hyphen these are also compound words uh, compound nouns otherwise compound nouns written as a one word there are some compound words which are written like a ring no space no hyphen teapot no space no hyphen or no space spaceship windscreen there are some uncountable compound nouns for instance uh, income tax cotton wool junk food packet money like compound nouns used only in singular like uh, generation gap uh, brain drain death penalty and the next I expect is like uh, word compounds like uh, to babysit to delay dream to sightsee to window shop is the one and the next let's go to H word or homonyms. Homonym is a word that is spelled or pronounced like another word but has a different meaning. So homonyms uh, also has two parts like homographs and homophones. Homographs are like uh, words which are spelled in the same way but have different meanings. For example, leap Word, lead, adjective. Read, present tense, read, past tense. Wind noun, wind word. Two, like uh, homographs. Next one, uh, homophones are words which are pronounced in the same way but are spelled differently. Like uh, F E O E, F E I R. Fair, fair. Like similarly, we have uh, great, great. Sale, sale, S A I L, sale, S A L, sale. It's the same one, it's pronounced in the same manner. And then next up, uh, one is a uh, phrasal verb. Phrasal verbs are made up of a verb plus an adverb or a preposition, or a verb plus an adverb or plus preposition. This is like a prepositional verb. So example, we can say go up like it's in Greece, figure out, come to know, look after, take care of, get over, recover from, carry on, continue, keep up, do, doing that, continue doing it, keep, give up, stop doing it, put out, extinguish, so that's uh, some of the phrasal verbs you need to talk about it, and the next one, uh, idioms. An idiom is a group of words with a meaning that is different from the individual words that make it up. For example, I feel like a drink. They have gone for good. We can make do with bread and eggs. Like uh, this is a possible thing. So it's not the pen. So what needs to be done? These things one needs to uh, teach in their work. So what are the possible ways of teaching the meaning of a new vocabulary? items and new words so like uh, one must provide a definition of that particular word and at the same time they must present detailed description of it like appearance and qualities if possible you can show it and uh, by providing uh, examples at the same time you can use illustrations and uh, using regalia you can carry some you can carry real objects to the classroom and you can teach vocabulary to the students to uh, for effective understanding and you also demonstrate demonstration like uh, you can act to provide the word vocabulary or you can mime it and contextualization so if you are getting some new vocabulary which is unknown to the students you can also contextualize it to understand better way 
and uh, using synonyms you can provide some synonyms which are uh, like uh, simple to complex and using antonyms also you can use associated ideas or collocations and last for translation you can uh, translate the same thing uh, to, into their mother tongue and make it uh, understandable to them so these are the, some of the possible ways to uh, teach meaning of new words effectively and uh, this is like uh, how to teach vocabulary at all levels this so you can use in all uh, different levels uh, with different uh, students quite heterogeneous students also it's uh, very easy to teach it but you must provide it uh, as I said that's like a contextualization and uh, using the Rilia you can make it uh, very uh, successful thank you for watching uh, subscribe to my channel to make uh, more videos like this thank you very much